Good evening, 4-H'ers. It's 7 p.m. Do you know where your parents are? Parents, do you know where your 4-H'ers are? That's a rhetorical question. Please don't answer it. We can't hear you right now anyways. But, of course, we all know we are at home watching this uh, presentation virtually this year, and we are all social distancing and keeping everybody safe, which is the reason we had to do the virtual fair this year uh, for safety reasons for all of you and your families. Uh, our theme for this year is In This Together, and as you all know, we certainly are. It's uh, been a challenging year, and we are, all of us uh, at this end and all of you on that end are in this together uh, to make it uh, the best better. Uh, this evening, uh, also I'd like to mention that Marion County Fair this year is celebrating a milestone, 90 years uh, of having the Marion County Fair, and that is huge. Uh, I'm not sure how that relates to other county fairs, but my gosh, 90 years, that's uh, almost as old as my father. Uh, so, you know, it, it's been a long time, and uh, we hope that uh, each year things get better and better uh, working with the county fair people. Uh, we are trying to improve things every year. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we have this year with us uh, a new state Indiana leader, and his name is Dr. Casey Mull. Uh, my wife and I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times at the National uh, Volunteer Gathering uh, Conference down in Georgia. Uh, quite a guy, uh, I tell you, he's, uh, he's entertaining, and... Uh, I think it's a, a great step uh, he is filling in for, um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Renee. Yes, Renee McKee, sorry about that. We need to go back. <laughs> okay, he's filling in for Renee McKee, uh, and I apologize, Renee, if you are watching. Um, so Dr. Casey Mole has a few words for us. Uh, please uh, uh, watch his presentation. Hello, I'm Dr. Casey, your new Indiana State 4-H program leader. I'm so excited to be with you here today, and I wanna congratulate each of our Marion County 4-Hers on their achievements, not only in this virtual fair, but in your 4-H accomplishments all year. I especially wanna thank our 10-year members and our graduating seniors. 2020 will definitely go down as a year whose theme is resiliency, grit, and determination. I'm hopeful that the second half of the year ends up being a lot better than the first half. But again, I'm so proud of each of your accomplishments. I understand that the theme for this award ceremony is in this together. We certainly are in this together. We may just be six feet apart. Now I want each of the young people that's watching this to pull out your phones. I, ideally, you may be watching this on, your, uh, on a computer or a tablet, so you can pull out your phones. Um, I'm gonna give you just a second to pull them out, and I want you to text a, your 4-H leader or a volunteer that's helped you along the way this year and text them, thank you. I want to thank each of the Marion County 4-H volunteers and families for being nimble and helping facilitate the virtual fair. And we certainly couldn't have done this without our 4-H educators, Rachel, Ashley, and Dustin. I want to give a huge thank you to you for everything that you have done in preparing for this week and this event today. And while we couldn't celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Marion County Fair in person this year, we're still going to have a great celebration virtually. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the virtual awards ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Mole. Uh, pleasure having you on board here with Indiana. Um, so hopefully uh, we can all work together and get through everything we need to. As usual, we like to start out the uh, program with the national anthem and our 4-H pledges. So if you would please uh, rise where you are and uh, uh, take off your hats and we will now do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We uh, had asked the educators, I should say, had asked everybody to send in a video clip of you or a group of you doing the 4-H pledge. And uh, we did get some uh, entries, uh, if you want to call them that, some submissions. And so we'd like to uh, do the 4-H pledge at this time. My community, my country, and my world. All righty. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce myself. I should have done that at the beginning. My name is Steve Boutnick. I'm sure a lot of you know me. I've uh, been in seeing the celebration program for us for the last number of years. I've uh, been around for a while, 19 years as a volunteer and leader. And I also have an assistant with me this year, uh, a co-MC, uh, if you would, and her name is Molly Knight. So, Molly, I'd like to call you up right now and uh, uh, mention about our sponsors. Thank you. So, we would like to recognize our sponsors, who without them, this virtual fair would not have been possible. We would like to thank McGath Concrete, Washington Township Lions Club, Michelle Mann, and the Marion County Fair Board. Now, if you would all pull out your cell phones and snap a photo of yourself wherever you are watching this presentation, and you can post it on social media and tag Marion County 4-H and use the hashtag in this together. Thank you, Molly. As usual, uh, when we do have our award ceremony, we have a, uh, a business here, not just in Marion County, but uh, they are all over the place, and they present for us every year an award to two of our 4-H'ers, uh, and that is the Marion County Farm Bureau. Uh, so I would like to call the president of the Marion County Farm Bureau up here, Mr. Jack Hafling. Uh, to do the presentation of our 10-year awards for this year. Jack? Thank you, Steve. Marion County Farm Bureau is proud to be involved with Marion County 4-H and Marion County Extension. With me today is our Director of Community uh, Relations and Education, Mr. Danny White. Danny, if you'd come forward, please. Today we're presenting plaques to two recipients of the coveted tenure award. Um, they represent excellence and devotion to a cause. And in 1914, Congress authorized 4-H to begin and relationship was started with the USDA by way of the Smith-Lever Act. In 1928, 4-H was instrumental in securing more funding through the Carp Capper Ketchum Act. The history of 4-H was built around farming, agriculture, and home culture. And over the years, more acts were passed by Congress to increase funding and ensure the 4-H became a benchmark to youth development. Each year, Indiana Farm Bureau, Marion County Farm Bureau, along with Marion County Extension, award outstanding achievements in 4-H. Today, we are here to honor Bethany Dayton and Alexis Shepard. Both Bethany and Alexis have been involved with 4-H for 10 years. Let's give these two girls a round of applause. Over the years, as Congress passed more bills involving 4-H, the opportunities for youth to develop character and learn leadership skills to forge ahead in today's challenging world. 
Today, over 600,000 adult volunteers guide and teach our youth today to be leaders of tomorrow. And Danny, if you would, would you hold up your plaques and let's present these to these great, fine, outstanding leaders in Marion County 4-H. We have two of these. Um, I'd like to read to you a little bit. Basically, every year Indiana Farm Bureau sponsors this award, as Jack has said, to recognize two members of each county for their years of involvement in 4-H clubs, number of completed projects, and their participation in Marion County Fairs the and the Indiana State Fair. This award is given to two Marion County 4-H members who have the largest combination of numbers of years of 4-H membership and total projects completed. This year's recipients, as Jack said, are Bethany Dayton, Bethany Dayton and Alexis Shepard, both members of Lawrence Township 4-H Club. Alexis will be attending IUPY School of Informatics and Computing and major in Media Arts and Science. She plans on returning to 4-H as an adult volunteer for Lawrence Township 4-H Club and Indy 4-H Dog Club, as well as continuing to work at her part-time job. Some of her favorite project, 4-H projects over the years were fine arts, both painting and drawing, doing dog posters, and participating in the 4-H Dog Club, something close to my heart. I'm a canine master trainer. Bethany will be attending Loyola University in Chicago to play Division I volleyball and study nursing. Her favorite projects were always photography. Through her 4-H photography projects and workshops, she learned so much and was always able to turn her photography into a side business during high school. And again, with these awards, congratulations to both of you and may you have a great time. Well deserved. Marion County Farm Bureau would like to announce its continued support of Marion County 4-H. As president of Marion County Farm Bureau, I'd like to be the first to tell you that we will be increasing our financial commitment to Marion County 4-H by establishing the Marion County Farm Bureau Matching Funds Program. Stay tuned as we will be working on more details and you will be the first to know on what those details are. It is designed to increase and accelerate membership in Marion County. As our theme this year has been stated, we're all in this together. Marion County Farm Bureau has embarked on a national project that affects Marion County 4-H and Marion County Extension. It also involves 400 other urban county farm bureaus and extensions across the United States. Through the National Urban Extension Leaders Group and through the Coalition of Urban County Farm Bureaus who are working together in a collaborative effort to increase and develop our 4-H youth development along with other programs within those structures across the United States. This is a monumental movement. It's a great opportunity for us to work together. Thank you today for being here. Youth need 4-H now more than ever. If you are able, please consider donating $15 towards sponsoring the enrollment fee for Marion County youth to 4-H. Our goal is to give out 100 scholarships, which is $1,500. You can either donate by credit card or through the Indiana Foundation's website by check. And the website for that is bit.ly slash clovergive. Please give whatever you are able. If you do donate on, online, type Marion County 4-H Membership Challenge into the gift notes so that your donation gets to us. And on the bottom of the screen, um, you can see where you'll type in your donation um, in the box that says other. And any amount helps, and it would be great if you could donate. So here is Steve to recognize our 10-year members and our graduating seniors. All right, all the 10-year members were asked to send in some information uh, about themselves. Uh, they had specific questions that they were asked to fill in. Uh, some of them did uh, for whatever reason, uh, some didn't. 
Um, maybe they weren't able to or whatever, but we, I will read off uh, the information that was sent to us. Uh, some it may be just a, the club that they were in. So, and they are in alphabetical order. Um, so here we go, Jason Barger. Jason is with the Wayne Township 4-H Club. Erica Bowman. Erica is with the Franklin Township Champions all 12 years, Clover Buds and Classic 4-H. Her parents' names are Carrie and Lori Bowman. The offices she held was a stack, snack coordinator. Her activities in 4-H were the 4-H Roundup, Shooting Sports, Small Animal Pet Showcase, Township Club Workshops and Meetings, Making Valentines for Veterans, and Nursing Homes. Her most memorable 4-H experience was winning Reserve Grand Champion for Miscellaneous Crafts and having two State Fair en entries as a third grader. Her future plans, she plans to attend Indiana State University in the fall and major in Interior Architecture Design. The life lesson learned was time management, getting projects done on time. Her school and community activities, she played varsity softball at Franklin Central for three years, travel softball, World Cultures Club. She is a member at Indian Creek Church, volunteering in the nursery and communion ministries. She participated in three family mission trips to Discovery Ministries in Eminence, Missouri, and attended summer camp at Camp Allendale. The most influential person in her 4-H career was her mom. Audrey Camastri. Audrey was a member of the Franklin Township 4-H. Hannah Cooper. Hannah Cooper was also a member of the Franklin Township 4-H. Bethany Dayton. She belonged to the Lawrence Township 4-H Club. Her parents are Bill and Ginger Dayton. The officers that she has held were none. She didn't have any offices at all. That's all right, though. 4-H activities, she participated in Christmas caroling and taught photography workshops. Her most memorable 4-H experience was getting her first selected for state ribbon. Future plans, she plans to play Division I volleyball and study nursing at Loyola University in Chicago. Life lesson learned, don't be afraid to try something new. School and community activities included, she participated in the Riley Dance Marathon, started Books for Lawrence Kids Book Drive, was a member of the Principal's Advisory Council, played travel and varsity volleyball, was a member of Tri High Y, which is an all-female community service club at school, and she was a senior spirit leader. The most influential person in her 4-H career was her mom. Trinity Gleitz. She's a member of the Perry Township Perry Power 4-H Club. Her mom's name is Christine Gleitz. Her 4-H activities included, she attended a workshop and meetings for, and Perry Power Fairs. She created and displayed projects and worked on service projects. Her most memorable 4-H experience was making cards for veterans flying to Washington, D.C., thanking them for their service receiving the Outstanding First Year 4-H Member Award, and taking projects to the Indiana State Fair. For future plans, she plans on attending the University of Indianapolis to study nursing. She will also be running cross-country and track there. Her life lesson learned was she can accomplish more with a good attitude and a willingness to try and give a project my all. School and community activities, she has completed service hours at senior citizen centers, food pantries, worked with handicapped children, and at her church. She ran varsity cross country for four years at Roncalli and participated in other sports at Roncalli. She has also worked at a couple of businesses in Greenwood. The most influential person in her 4-H career, Janet Canary, Perry Power 4-H club leader, who answered all her questions, provided her with needed paperwork, got the 4-H book she needed to do projects so she didn't have to come up here to the 4-H office at the state fairgrounds and encouraged her when she needed encouragement. Lauren Neal. 
Lauren's a member of the Lawrence Township 4-H Club. Her parents are Joe and Jamie Neal. She has held the offices of Secretary, Photographer, Marion County 4-H Junior Leaders Secretary. Her 4-H activities included Dog Club, Marion County 4-H Junior Leaders, Marion County Shooting Sports, Lawrence Township Cloverbutt Assistant, and Lawrence Township Junior Leaders. Her most memorable 4-H experience would either be getting a grand champion on her dog poster her first year as a classic 4-H'er or placing sixth place in showmanship her first year of participating in the Indiana State Fair Dog Show. Her future plans is she's going to Purdue University to major in veterinary nursing. After college, her goal is to work as a veterinary nurse at a zoo. She would also love to own a wildlife conservation slash rehabilitation center of her own. Life lesson learned. I think one of the most influential life lessons that I learned throughout all my years in 4-H is to keep moving forward and working towards a goal, despite all the challenges that come with it. Her school and community activities, she participated in Tri High Y, National Honor Society, Zoology Club, Show Choir, Symphonic Band, Indianapolis Zoo Teens, and Youth Group. The most influential person in her 4-H career was Sue Barlow. Lillian Roberson, she is a member of the 5-H, 4-H Classic Club, which is a homeschool club. Her parents are Stephen and Carla Roberson. The offices that Lillian has held, she has one year as secretary, four years as vice president, and one year as president. Her 4-H activities were, included the fashion review. The most memorable 4-H experience was modeling for the fashion review at the Marion County Fair. Her future plans, she will be attending Olivet, Nazarene University this fall to pursue a communications degree. Her school and community activities, she sang for three years in the Indianapolis Children's Choir High School Division. The most influential person in her 4-H career, her mom. Trevor Raish. Trevor is a member of the Franklin Township 4-H. His activities were leather craft, pottery, and wearable arts projects, and the Marion County 4-H Junior Leaders. His future plans, he is pondering these future plans at this point. He has started his first job at Kroger right now. The life lesson learned, he has learned how I can assist in my community by preparing a meal for the families at the Ronald McDonald House or by making cards and thanking thinking of you notes for hospitalized veterans at the VA hospital. Alexis Shepard. Alexis is a member of the Lawrence Township 4-H Club. Her parents are Michelle and Thomas Shepard. She has held the offices of Vice President, Junior Leader, and Cloverbutt Assistant. Her 4-H activities, she participated in the dog club demonstrations at Waterman's Farm Market, Christmas ornament making and caroling at a nursing home, made cards for soldiers, and helped with Cloverbud activities. Her most memorable 4-H experience was one year at the Indiana State Fair Dog Show, her Boston Terrier decided to run around the agility ring like it was a playground rather than a show ring and had everyone laughing, including herself. Her future plans, she plans to attend IUPUI's School of Informatics and Computing and major in media arts and science, as well as coming back to 4-H as an adult leader. Her life lesson learned, awards are just a token of achievement, but the experience in 4-H is something that stays with you for a lifetime. Her school and community activities, she participated in school robotics. She was an assistant leader in the robotics. She did volunteer work for the National Honor Society and recycling at school. The most influential person in her 4-H career, I have two people who I would say was the most influential during my 4-H career, the first person being my mom. Without her help and motivation of trying to finish projects on time, I probably wouldn't have done as much in 4-H as I have. Over the course of my 10 years, she has helped me stay on track with projects and activities as well as being my main support. A second person I'd like to recognize is Sue Barlow. 
Sue was a structured and caring person. She would go out of her way to assist any and all of her kids in training. She might have been strict on her teachings, but she still treated us like family. Madison Slade. Madison belonged to the Perry Township Perry Power 4-H Club. Her parents are Kyle and Regina Slade. The offices she held was president, vice president, and the health and safety officer. Her 4-H activities were fashion review. She was a guest speaker at the 4-H Leadership Summit and an Indian ambassador. Her most memorable 4-H experience was attending the Washington Focus Trip. Her future plans, she plans to receive her real estate broker license and sign up with a team. And if you get that real quick, Adam Vinatieri's house is for sale right now, two and a half million. See if you can get that listing there, Madison. It'd be a good start. Her life lesson learned, 4-H has taught her no matter how much you want to give up, if you keep pushing yourself, you are capable of achieving great things. Her school and community activities, homeschool and seek co-op. She was a Crimson Knights cheerleader. She collects American Heritage dolls and plays a piano. The most influential person in her 4-H career, my mother Regina. Year after year, my mother got me through the 4-H season. She spent countless hours helping me learn new skills, made sure that I had all the paperwork completed, checked tags, took me to and from 4-H events, gave me endless amounts of encouragement, and so much more. I wouldn't be where I am today without the guidance, love, and patience she has shown. Benjamin Truax. Benjamin is a member of the Pike Township 4-H. His parents are Mark and Lynn Truax. 4-H activities, dog obedience, fine arts, and pottery. His most memorable 4-H experience Tennis court dog obedience shows. Future plans, he plans to attend the University of Cincinnati. The life lesson learned, I have learned the importance of community. School and community activities, I am a Heron High School 2020 graduate. And the most influential person in his 4-H career was Mrs. Bo. Molly? Now, I will be recognizing the graduating seniors. Nine-year 4-H members are Zoe Ferguson and Kenzie Amico. Eight-year members, Kira Clark-Payton. Six years, Jack Failer. Five years, Isabel Turner. Three years, Emily Gulley. And one year, John Switzer and Matthew Paulson. Now I'd like to recognize our Indiana 4-H scholarship winners. Isabel Turner won the Edelman Family Scholarship Endowment. Molly Knight won the Healthy Living, Food, and Nutrition Science Accomplishment Scholarship. And Sanaya Hunt won the Leadership Accomplishment Scholarship. The Performing Arts Contest these are our winners. Uh, in first place was Destiny Rodriguez. This is the individual small group musical. And first runner up, Carol Ann Lorenzoni. And in first place was Molly Knight. We asked all of our 4-H'ers to send in any photos that they had of, with their animals, and these are the ones that they responded with. They all look adorable. I personally don't have any pets, but looking at these, I definitely wish I did. Now it is the time that you all have been waiting for. It is time to reveal the results from our online pro project judging. 
So as you all know, we moved to the fair online this year to keep everyone safe. Safe, And so the awards have changed a little bit this year because we went online and because of the number of projects that were submitted. So the ribbons are the same. We have white, red, blue, champion, and reserve champion. And then we also have reserved grand champion and grand champion. And for someone to be awarded either reserved grand champion or grand champion, there had to be at least three exhibits and three total projects in each of the, in three total projects in two divisions for those um, awards to be ex received. And we also have the State Fair ribbon. For Aerospace, for Reserved Grand Champion, we have Nathaniel Lindquist. And for Grand Champion, we have Eli Kunkelnap. Uh, for moving on to the State Fair, we have Ashton Compton, Eli Kunkelnap, Nathaniel Lindquist, and Alexander Smith. For ceramics, the reserve grand champion is Michaela Powell Sargent, and the grand champion is Alexis Shepard. For arts and crafts, latch hook, the champion is Claire Dietz, and she will be moving on to the state fair. For leather craft, the reserve grand champion is Kayla Van Sickle, and the grand champion is Alexander Hoffman, who will be moving on to the state fair. For Legos, the reserve grand champion is Tatiana Hobbs, and the grand champion is Alexander Hoffman. For Macrame, which is a project of the year, the reserved grand champion is Maggie Weber, and the grand champion is Clinton Bechtel, who will be moving on to the state fair. For Miscellaneous, the reserved grand champion is Lillian Robertson, and the grand champion is Audrey Alford, who will be moving on to the state fair. We have we've had many entries in the miscellaneous projects. So this is another all the some of the other entries. Here's our third page of the entries and this looks like a wonderful project. Here's the fourth page. Here's the fifth page. And the sixth and final page of our miscellaneous projects. For pottery, the reserve grand champion is Joseph Adams, and the grand champion is Tina Kofer. For recycled craft, the reserve grand champion is Jenna Stone, and the grand champion is Michaela Grimes. Here's the second page of the recycled crafts. For seasonal decoration, the reserve grand champion is Anzi Wiseman, and the grand champion is Michaela Kedra. And here's the second page of our seasonal decoration entries. For wearable art, the reserve grand champion is Grant Zellers, and the grand champion is Madison Slade. And here's another, here are all the other entries for wearable arts. For woodcraft, the reserved grand champion is Michaela Powell Sargent, and the grand champion is Molly Knight, who will be moving on to the state fair. For beekeeping, the champion is Lois Cash, who will be moving on to the state fair. For beef poster, the champion is Ava Ferguson. For bowling, the champion is Ava Ferguson. For cake decorating, which is a project of the year, the reserved grand champion is Arabella Lytle, and the grand champion is Bailey Davis, who will be moving on to the state fair. For cat poster, the reserve grand champion is Anzi Wiseman, and the grand champion is Dagny Kowal. Dagny Kowal and Starly Livesay will be moving on to the state fair. For child development, the champion is Tatiana Hobbs, who will be moving on to the state fair. For collections, coins, the champion is Alexis Shepard. For collections, miscellaneous, the reserve grand champion is Alexander Smith, and the grand champion is Molly Knight. For community service, the co-champions are Ein Kowal and Dagny Kowal. For creative writing, the reserve grand champion is Amelia Alford, and the grand champion is Madeline Alford. 
For dog poster, the reserve grand champion is Curlan Lorenzoni, and the grand champion is Alexis Shepard. And Kixton Lemon, Coraline Lorenzoni, and Alexis Shepard will all be moving on to the state fair. For electric, the reserved grand champion is Joseph Adams, and the grand champion is Joshua Lindquist. Joseph Adams, Jason Barger, Joshua Lindquist, Nathaniel Lindquist, and Nora Skaggs will all be moving on to the state fair. For etymology, the reserve grand champion is Owen Doyle, and the grand champion is Finn and Doyle, and they both will be moving on to the state fair. For fashion review, the reserve grand champion is Anastasia Hobbs, and the grand champion is Amelia Alford. arts computer generated these are the results of those projects for fine arts drawing the reserve grand champion is Alexis Shepard and the grand champion is Lillian Robertson and Lillian Robertson will be moving on to the state fair for fine arts painting the reserve grand champion is Grace Piercy and the grand champion is Clinton Bechtel who will be moving on to the state fair here are the second page of the results, and the third. For miscellaneous arts, the reserve champion is Ein Koal, and the champion is Grace Piercy. For Florida culture, the reserve grand champion is Ashton Compton, and the grand champion is Ein Koal. Ashton Compton, Ein Koal, and Dagny Koal will all be moving on to the state fair. And here's Steve to announce the rest of the projects. Okay, in the foods baked division, our reserve grand champion is Arabella Lytle, and the grand champion is Carol Ann Lorenzoni. Moving on to the state fair will be Amelia Alford, Claire Dietz, Kara Karmelinski, Molly Knight, Arabella Lytle, Carol Ann Lorenzoni, Charlotte Sherman, and Nora Skaggs. The Create with a Mix, our co-champions are Kara Karmelinski and Claire Dietz. In the Microwave Division, a Reserve Grand Champion, Anastasia Hobbs, and the Grand Champion, Tatiana Hobbs. The Preserved Foods, our Reserve Grand Champion, Olivia Colby, Grand Champion, Charlotte Sherman, with Amelia Alford, Madeline Alford, Mary Armstrong, and Olivia Colby all going on to the State Fair. Also Anastasia Hobbs, Molly Knight, Carol Ann Lorenzoni, Matthew Ritchie, and Charlotte Sherman will also be going to the State Fair with the Preserved Foods Division. In forestry, our reserve grand champion, Jenna Stone. Our grand champion, Dagny Kowal with Ein Kowal, Dagny Kowal, and Jenna Stone all going on to the State Fair. Geology, our reserve grand champion, Clinton Bechtel. Our grand champion, Dagny Kowal. Clinton Bechtel, Dagny Kowal will both be going on to the State Fair. In the health, 
Reserve Grand Champion, Dagny Kowal. Grand Champion, Mariela Rojas, with both ladies moving on to the State Fair. In the Herbs, our Reserve Grand Champion, Catherine Million. Our Grand Champion, Alexis Shepard, with Eli Camp, Catherine Million, Victoria Million, Laurel, um, I'm sorry, Alexis Shepard, all moving on to the State Fair. Home environment, we had co-champions, Jenna Stone and Molly Knight. Both ladies will be moving on to the State Fair with that project. Indiana Heritage, our champion was Stella Walker. In the junior leaders, our champion, Molly Knight. In models, our champion, Alexis Shepard. And Calvin Anderson and Alexis Shepard will both be going on to the State Fair with their models. Needlecraft, our reserve grand champion, Madeline Alford. Our grand champion, Lauren Wimmer. And both of those people will be going on to State Fair. Another project of the year, photography in the black and white prints, our champion, Kayla Van Sickle. She will be going to State Fair with that. In the black and white salon, a reserve grand champion, Anzi Wiseman, a grand champion, Ein Kowal. Ein and Anzi will both be going to State Fair with their projects. In the color prints, a reserve grand champion, Kayla Van Sickle, grand champion, Anastasia Hobbs. Bailey Davis, Anastasia Hobbs, Tara Neal, and Kayla Van Sickle will all be going to State Fair with that project, Color Prince. Color Salon, Reserve Grand Champion, Kayla Van Sickle. Grand Champion, Anzi Wiseman. And Anzi will be going to State Fair with her project. Creative Photography, Reserve Grand Champion, John Fencheck. Grand Champion, Ein Kowal. And Ayn and John will both be going to State Fair with their photography there. The poultry poster or display, our champion, Stella Walker. And Stella will be going to State Fair with that project. Promoting 4-H poster, we had co-champions, Dagny Kowal and Bodie Gomez Spears. For public speaking, we had co-champions, Anastasia Hobbs and Tatiana Hobbs. Tatiana will be going on to State Fair with her public speaking. I've even cooked with things I told my mom I hated, like onions, because I wanted to see if they made me cry. They did, but they tasted good. Finally, submitting those photos to the county. My family is not techno savvy. It took us four computers and three cell phones, but we did it by 10.20 p.m. with 99 minutes to spare. That's actually early for us. The rabbit poster, Dagny Kowal was our champion and she will be going to State Fair with that poster. Reading for fun, our reserve grand champion, Dagny Kowal. Our grand champion, Jenna Stone. Scrapbooking, we had co-champions, Anzi Wiseman and Molly Knight. <coughs> Excuse me. Self-determined, our reserve grand champion, Stella Walker. Our grand champion, Tatiana Hobbs. And there are some more of the self-determined. Sewing construction, non-wearable. Our reserve grand champion, Dagny Kowal. Our grand champion, Ashton Compton. Jenna Beckville, Ashton Compton, and Dagny Kowal will all be going to State Fair with that project. In the wearable sewing construction, reserve grand champion, Audrey Alford, grand champion, Amelia Alford, 
And those two, along with Anastasia Hobbs, Arabella Lytle, and Lincoln Nolan, will be going to State Fair. Shooting sports, education. Their champion is Alexander Hoffman, and he will be going to State Fair with that. Soil and water science. We had co-champions, Dagny Kowal and Ein Kowal. And both ladies will be going to State Fair with that project. Sports Poster, a reserve grand champion, Kixton Lemon. Our grand champion, Kara Karmolinski. The Swine Poster, our champion, Dagny Kowal. Don't ever get Dagny started on talking about pigs because she will go on forever. She'll tell you all kinds of stories. Technology, reserve grand champion Brandon Pardeek, grand champion Sean Julian. Veterinary science, we had co-champions Dagny Kowal and Tatiana Hobbs. Both ladies are taking those projects to the State Fair. Weather and climate science, our reserve grand champion Dagny Kowal, grand champion Clinton Bechtel, both of those people will be going to State Fair with that project. In the wildlife, our champion was Tatiana Hobbs, and she will be going to State Fair with that project also. In woodworking, our reserve grand champion, Clinton Bechtel, our grand champion, Paul Short. Clinton and Paul will both be going to State Fair with their projects. The 4-H'ers Animal Fever Division, Reserve Grand Champion Aiden Sargent, the Grand Champion Joey Adams. In the Clover Buds, <laughs> we have those three right there. And there is the list of all our Clover Buds. The, uh, the three photos that you see right there, there were 38 clover buds um, in the, the youth uh, kindergarten to second grade uh, that had submitted photos or pro of projects that they completed, uh, which were judged, and they will receive a special ribbon along with feedback from the judges later. Congratulations to all our clover buds. Keep up the good work, um, and it'll be rewarding as you get older and go through your later years in 4-H. Those photos right there that are seen on your screen, the mug was from Joelle and Francis. The tie-dye shirt was from Benjamin Stone. And the painting of the pink flamingo from Mallory Anderson. Next, we'd like to thank all of our judges. Uh, we can't say enough about the, what they had to go through this year. Uh, it was a challenge for everybody, for you as putting in projects, but also for our judges to have to virtually judge projects that normally they can get their hands on and, and look at all kinds of different angles at them and, and get a real good read on, on what the project is and how you did. They, uh, they did one heck of a job, but we think this is a list of names. Uh, you know, we, we can't thank them enough. It, it was a big challenge for them, but they came through, and we hope that you all are as happy with the job they did uh, as uh, we are for, for all of you. So we would really like to, uh, for you to see who these judges were that judged your projects. Thank you, judges. We would also like to thank all of our volunteers who without them, the, uh, this 4-H fair would not have been possible. So we would like to recognize our fair committee volunteers and our 4-H advisory council and all of their names are listed on the screen. So finally, you can now log into fair entry and see your results and any comments that the judges left you. The Marion County 4-H office will be following up with you over the next few weeks to answer any questions that you may have and to help the youth selected to move on to the State Fair. And you can keep an eye out on our social media for videos and photos coming out showcasing all of the projects 
um, that were entered. So we would like to thank all of you tonight for watching this, and we would like to thank all of you for participating in the 2020 Marion County 4-H Fair. Also, without, we'd be remiss in thanking three very special people. Uh, he's shaking his head, no, don't do it, but yes, I am doing it. I'm at the microphone, you're not. So we would like to, uh, and all of you, you know, as, as Casey uh, Moe mentioned in his little presentation, send out a text, uh, 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 email or something to, to people that, uh, for what they've done. And a lot of you don't know what has gone into this virtual fair this year. Uh, those of us that are on the committee, uh, it, it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, like once a week, twice a week. And the three educators that we have now been blessed with here uh, at Marion County, uh, you guys can't imagine the work that them three people have put into this entire project. Uh, it was a lot, probably a lot more work than what our normal fare is. Uh, <laughs> and endless endless uh, hours and late nights uh, you know taking registrations of projects and everything till midnight or after midnight getting phone calls at all times of the day and night uh, but Ashley Dustin and Rachel uh, what a fantastic crew you guys are uh, had you not been on this year with the virtual and all the technology we had to do I can honestly say I don't think we would have got through this uh, we probably would not have had a county fair at all so uh, all of you at home uh, when you get a chance uh, shoot them a text shoot them an email whatever uh, preferably I'm sure not at 11:59 at night or 12 o'clock at night they may sleep for the next uh, week or so just to catch up so thank them and and we appreciate uh, Dustin Rachel and Ashley we appreciate all the work you've put into us and thanks it was great we, we love you thank you have a good evening